There are all sorts of types of glass in the world. There's normal glass that you put in a window. There's safety glass, which is laminated, usually with a sheet of plastic in between it, or several sheets, uh, as used in car windscreen, so that the glass still breaks, but the bits don't fly everywhere. Uh, you have security glass, which is a load of old broken bottles cemented into the top of a wall so that as starving urchins with no shoes come over into your garden just to innocently nick an apple, they get shredded and then they bleed to death. But life is cheap in the suburbs. Sugar glass is used by uh, the theatre business and in television. So when you see those scenes in a Wild West bar brawl where people run up and hit each other over the head with a bottle or throw someone through a window, that is actually glass made out of melted and cast sugar. It looks very much like glass, but it's very, very breakable. It won't hurt you if you hit somebody with it. But the problem with that is everybody, as a result of watching those old westerns, thinks it's quite amusing to hit someone over the head with a bottle. If you do it for real, you actually kill someone. There's also a type of sugar glass that a British bloke invented some years ago that is used for the, you know, in case of emergency break glass things on trains, because those used to be made from real glass, and the irony was there would be an emergency hammer behind the glass, and to get the emergency hammer to break the window, you had to break the piece of glass over the hammer which slashed your fingers to pieces. So you couldn't then hold the little hammer to break the big window. So you were actually condemned to die in a train crash, the blazing wreckage of a train crash, simply because no one had invented a form of sugar glass yet. Marbles are made of glass. I used to like marbles when I was a kid. And the way marbles are made is very interesting because they are uh, formed, I've watched this on How It's Made, that American series, you form effectively a blob of glass. And they're often, the really nice ones are made by hand, rolled around on a, a metal edge, I'm not sure what it's called. And so you've almost got a marble and then you snip it off and then you put it in a series of rollers which tumble it and reverse it at the same time until it's polished into a perfect sphere. A bit like a ball bearing. Oh, ornamental glass. Well, you get a lot of that from Venice, of course. Interestingly, in the 14th century, I think it was, the, the value of the Venetian glassmaker's skill was so great that they were effectively contained on the islands under pain of death. And if one of them escaped, which they occasionally did, the whole city was charged with hunting him down and killing him because if he got away, the secret of how that glass was made would spread to the wider world, which of course it did eventually. But at the time, if you took on an apprenticeship as a glass maker on the island of Murano, you effectively went to prison. You committed yourself to staying there for the rest of your life, or probably having your tongue cut off or something like that. Any other glass facts? Glass beads, glass. Cut it. You can remove the cork from a glass wine bottle. This isn't really a glass fact. But if you bang it bottom end first against the wall, but put something soft in between, like put it inside your shoe, so there's a little bit of cushioning. Banging it will send effectively, I think, an, an eddy current up the air in the bottle and produce a little pressure burst that will gradually make the cork pop out until it flies out and the wine goes all over your shirt. I've seen that done. And you can cut the top of a champagne bottle off with a sabre. And I've done that. If you get it wrong, you, it just disintegrates and the champagne goes all over the floor. But if you get it right, you have to hit it with a slight stroking action because in the, that fraction of a second, the edge of the blade has to be very sharp, makes a tiny scratch in the glass and then knocks the top off. And if you do it right, it makes a very clean cut, but you waste a lot of expensive champagne learning to do it. Just a bit stuck with glass facts now. Glass eyeballs aren't really made of glass anymore. They're made out of synthetic materials, but I can't remember quite what. But in the olden days, after the First World War and so on, when people used to lose eyes every other day, they were actually just effectively marbles that were shoved into your eye socket. So they always looked in a different direction. These days, they can make them line up with your good eye. <laughs>